Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is Tyler with Team Zombillies and TheScareFactor.com. Today we are going to do a deep dive into our costuming category of our review criteria. So, how do we score costuming? With this question, or with this category, we have five main questions that we look at for each attraction that we go to whenever we are scoring them. Those questions are... How complete and finished did the costumes appear to be, which is worth about 15% of the score. We also look at how creative and detailed were the costumes, which is about 25% of the score. We also look at was the makeup creative, detailed, or realistic, and realistic. That's also worth 20% of the score. And we look at how effectively did they use masks, if at all, and if so, that score is worth 15% of the score. Lastly, we look at how appropriate were the costumes for their respective scenes and themes, and that question is worth the last 25% of the score. So question one, how complete and finished did the costumes appear to be? When we're looking at this, uh, we're looking at did we notice if there were any missing articles, makeup, or accessories that if they were present, they would have helped in creating a more realistic look. So just because a character has enough to look the part doesn't mean it couldn't have been better. Would additional layers uh, being added to the outfit, would that have helped or hindered the overall appearance? And did we notice any obviously normal street clothing or untreated areas of the costume, like bare skin and bright white shoes, things like that? So for our scoring rubric for this question, a 1 to 2 would be basically little to no costuming at all. We saw a lot of street clothes, obvious shoes like white tennis shoes with a black cloak, you know, those stick out like a sore thumb, and untouched skin, especially hands. Uh, luckily, as a team, we don't see this very often at all, but we have seen it before. A 3 to 4 would mean that nearly all of the characters had costuming, but there was still a lot of bare skin. Uh, for numerous reasons, we've seen haunts where they only wear a mask and regular clothing, uh, you know, the common latex clown mask that doesn't fit, a random gray softball t-shirt, maybe some red basketball shorts, that kind of thing. A 5 to 6 is considered average on our scale, and for this question, many of the characters would have decent wardrobes, masks, and makeup on. Uh, you'd see a lot less of your red basketball shorts, untouched jeans, ETC. They're going to start looking more like haunt characters at this point. Now, 7 to 8, this is above average, and we're starting to get somewhere. 7 to 8 would be uh, what we see most commonly, I'd say. Uh, many, if not most, of the characters are in costume from head to toe when they're in this range. There's going to be some items that still seem out of place. You're still going to have a little bit of bare skin on some characters, uh, places where layers would still be beneficial, and that random hoodie or haunt t-shirt that just doesn't match the actual characters. You're going to see some of that stuff still. Uh, a lot of times uh, we'll see a drop down, a drop down panel character, and they'll have like a bright white shirt or just a black or an orange hoodie behind the wall there. And I get that you know they're they're kind of not right in the limelight, but we can still see that whenever the drop panel comes down. So we we have to make a note of those kind of things. And lastly, a score of 9 to 10 is given when we haven't seen many haunts that have done much better than this. And we, frankly, we don't think they can do a whole lot better. Um, most, if not all, the costumes that we saw were complete. And uh, we didn't see any bare skin. Even your zombies and hillbillies have grunge and blood and sores. Something covering pretty much every square inch of skin. They don't look normal at all. Uh, even the hidden characters, those that are coming out from under your beds and behind your drop panels, they're all wearing something that didn't make their body stand out like a normal person. Uh, we've seen several haunts take the uh, where they have the light that goes in front of the character's face after the drop panel comes down, for example, and that kind of keeps you focused on the face and doesn't let you see some of the rest of the costume. That can be a good uh, illusion that can 
make the drop panel thing work. Um, so yeah, using lighting to your advantage like that can work pretty well. Now this first photo is an example. We can pretty much tell that it's just not complete. There's a mask, but it doesn't match what he's got going on with the rest of his outfit. Not sure what's going on with that shirt. Uh, his arms are just plain. He's got bright white pants on. There's no distressing or detailing at all going on here. This is pretty much the bottom of the range that we're looking at. And for our second photo, this one is completely covered from head to toe. Well, it's kind of hard to see the feet, but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, they got lots of accessories and layers going on. They got a full face mask. It's tucked in. Uh, hands and arms are covered. Everything looks cohesive, which makes for a really complete and believable character. Our next question is how creative and detailed were the costumes? Basically, uh, let's see, how much could the costumes have benefited from additional features, detailing, or distressing where applicable? You know, we understand that not every character needs to be built to the gills, but the ones that do look like they could benefit from that, judging by, you know, the rooms and scenes that they're in, you know, we want to make sure they look top notch. And are the costumes custom made? And are they of good quality? Or are they the generic jug drugstore or Walmart outfits, robes, ETC, you know, uh, things that look like they were just bought and put on, no customization or, or love given to them at all. And when appropriate, did they look like they were well distressed and tattered? Uh, most costumes should be grungy or aged rather than clean and fresh. For our scoring rubric for how creative and detailed were the costumes, we're looking at a 1 to 2 being very, very basic, uh, obviously untouched, lots of street clothes and off-the-shelf store-bought pieces. Uh, for example, let's say we find a zombie wandering around in a wooded area. He's wearing black dress pants. Looks like he just picked them up from the store about an hour ago. White button-down shirt, long sleeves maybe, and a tiny bit of black under his eyes. Very basic clothes to come by, you know, the only thing that really told us this guy was a zombie was because he was stumbling around and just mumbling. He was when he was walking by. Okay, that's a zombie, but can't really tell by looking at him. For a three to four, we got a little bit more layering going on. Might have some hats and matching gloves, but the majority of the characters are still wearing pretty plain attire. So back to our zombie, now he's got a little bit of blood on his shirt from something, maybe some scuffs of mud, but that's still pretty much about it. In the 5 to 6 range, not much better as the above still. Um, there's still, uh, most of the characters would have costumes, but uh, the less common they are, the better. Um distressing uh they're getting some more added features in there some little trinkets and accessories uh colors paint and all that kind of stuff is really starting to come in and add a little bit of realism and uh, back to our zombie example now his shirt's starting to get tattered his shoes are looking dirty but still not a whole lot else at least he does have on full attire and somewhat resembles a zombie in the 7 to 8 range, the costumes are more layered, and it's starting to be a lot less obvious that they're a costume. They're starting to look a lot more like the real thing. Uh, with our zombie example, he's had a pretty major overhaul from where he started out. His pants are ripped, shirt's still ripped. Uh, he's got some more blood on him, and his shirt isn't you know this bright white flashlight sticking out at us. Uh, he's also got some messed up hair at this point, a lot more makeup on his face. He's he's really starting to look a lot like a dead guy. And 9 to 10 range, this is some of the best stuff we've ever seen. Uh, these costumes would be items that appear to be custom created. Uh, at this point, we're going to add more and more accessories, including jewelry and even more tattered hats, things on the head, uh, appropriate hairstyles, layers... Lots more colors on the skin. Uh, we may see a lot more characters where their eyes and teeth have also been touched and altered at some in some way at this point. Uh, these characters are basically starting to look like they're the real thing. And back to our zombie guy, it's pretty clear at this point that this guy just dug himself out of the grave. And uh, he's covered in all kinds of dirt, mud, blood, who knows what else. His shirt is no longer white. 
Uh, matter of fact, it's hard to tell if it ever actually was white. It's not stained. It is now stained with death and decay. Uh, we can see his rotting flesh through the holes in the clothes, and it's obvious that he's been rotting for quite some time. His hair is totally dirty, all messed up, and his shoes are just as nasty as everything else on him. Uh, as, we, as well as his fingers and hands, we're not going to forget about those. Like, you know, he just dug himself out of the ground. His hands need to look pretty nasty. For this first picture, this is just a screenshot of a stock photo of a... Uh, spirit halloween clown uh, there's a few details on his mask but otherwise he's very very clean uh, even his gloves and shoes those are spotless uh, not a whole lot of creativity going on here and it's lacking any kind of accessories or other items that could create a more well-rounded and detailed character ex appearance and for this second picture there's a lot more stuff to see here. Um, the middle guy, for example, like he chose the ruffled shirt instead of just a plain one. Uh, everyone's arms and hands are covered, uh, except for the left one's fingers. It, uh, we're not sure where those have been. But, uh, uh, the, all the heads are detailed. They've got stuff on them, hats. Uh, the middle guy looks like his head's been blown off or blown out. Uh, the clown's ruffles are even dirty and tattered, and the one on the left's got three or four of them looks like there and uh, kind of the, the overall outfits are just overall grungy and just kind of makes you wonder what in the heck they've been doing to get so nasty these are pretty good looking costumes now the next question was was their makeup creative detailed and realistic some of the things we're looking at here is how skillfully the makeup was applied. Uh, did they create some intricate looks that you've never seen before, or did they stick to more primitive styles? Uh, how well did they use prosthetics to help develop their appearances? Those are important makeup uh, accessories as well. So for our rubric for this question, a 1 to 2, there's virtually no makeup at all. If we noticed any at all, it was very plain, fake looking, blocky, sporadic, no rhyme or reason to it at all. Uh, very rarely do we visit haunts that perform this poorly in the makeup department. In a 3 to 4, some effort was contributed to makeup. Uh, we got darkened eyes, but they're still kind of blocky, less skillfully applied. Looks like more of a last minute afterthought than an actual costume makeup application. For the 5 to 6, the makeup is apparent, but it's still not quite lifelike. Uh, they're starting to use some layers, starting to introduce some a little bit of finer details. It's clear that scarier looks were wanted, but techniques need to be honed in to improve from this range. In the 7 to 8, we're seeing some more finer details and prosthetics starting to be noticed. Um, blending and realism is much better. Uh, the applications make sense with the character, and they're actually starting to improve those characters' overall looks. Uh, we've seen some higher-end makeup jobs uh, sink down to this range uh, just because of inappropriate materials being used. Like, it, we could tell that it started off really good, but, like, maybe they started sweating and it started running, and those kinds of things can really, honestly, ruin a good makeup job if, if you're not using the right materials, and, and we have to make a note of that. And in the 9 to 10 range, these are some of the most highly skilled and customized applications we've ever seen. Uh, elaborate prosthetics and uh, thoughtful designs are blending in seamlessly with the rest of the costumes. It's starting to be hard to tell that we're even looking at a makeup job here, even up close. And uh, 2020 excluded, we do like those up close and personal encounters for where we can really get up close and uh, see all those details in the makeup and on mask too for that matter and we're going to talk about that one next um also for the for you haunt actors and and makeup people um if you know that we're going to get a good clear look at you you know make sure that your makeup is up to snuff if you are expecting a score from us in this range but please keep your bodily fluids to yourself wink wink um with this 
question, the score can be omitted if we only see masks used on every single actor. Basically, there was no makeup being used and all bare skin was covered by like some kind of article of clothing. There's no makeup at all. Uh, we can omit this question from our scoring and it doesn't affect the score either way. For this first picture is pretty uh, pretty sporadic makeup job. Um, it does have some reddened eyes but it's pretty blocky. There's not a lot of blending going on. Those veins are freaking huge. Uh, we can tell that they were done with a brush. We can see the brush strokes in them. Uh, got some kind of Queen of Hearts lipstick job going on there. It does have at least a slightly paled complexion. Um, then this random green stripe of hair going in there. Um, and the fact that the makeup doesn't extend down the neck or anything, it, it's really hard to tell what this makeup job is supposed to be. And the second picture is a couple of looks that we pulled from the Devil's Attic, one of our local haunts down here in Louisville. Um, as a matter of fact, they've gotten our Best Makeup Award for the past couple of years. Uh, this is 2021 when this is being recorded. Um, like the left one, for example, has a lot more line work and even like some crackling like detail going on. Uh, it kind of matches the tribal feel of the rest of the costume, and going down the neck helps make it a seamless and consistent look. Uh, there's some black around the eyes. That's a little bit blocky, but it does help those white contacts pop a little bit more. Now on the right side, he's got a little bit more subtle stuff going on. Um, and looking at his face from the bottom left up to the upper right, it starts off, you know, kind of pale, transitioning to more reddened and bruised looks, and then we're introducing some veins and some severe irritation uh, before ending up at all those boils and blisters that look to be the root of his condition. Uh, even that one eye is colored, seemingly also affected by this infection that he's got going on. Very good makeup job. Now this next photo is from a makeup artist at the Culbertson Mansion in New Albany, Indiana, and this one shows kind of what is possible without the use of any kind of prosthetics or anything. You can see that the makeup comes all the way down into her chest. She's got a nice little biohazard symbol down there. Got some green scaly stuff going on. Uh, the mouth, you can see some of the, uh, the muscle structure and stuff inside of her cheeks and even has some little veins and things coming up there. So there's a really good blend of uh, bigger, more noticeable features with the makeup combined with uh, some shading and stuff all around the eyes and on the forehead and she's got the third eye up there and matching contacts so this is another really good example of what can be done with makeup so for our next question number four uh, how effectively did they use masks? So this is basically along the lines of the makeup question but we're looking at masks this time were the masks appropriate for the characters wearing them, like in size, style, that kind of thing. If they were full head masks, um, were they tucked into their costumes, you know, were they worn appropriately? And did they help make the characters look more scary and intimidating, or were they kind of counterproductive for them, you know? For our rubric for this question, a one to two, basically very few masks in use. Um, those that we did see are cheap, flimsy plastic drugstore models, uh, possibly even being worn on top of the characters' heads. You know, not wearing them right. In that case, you might as well not be using them at all. Uh, three to four, most of the masks are still in place, uh, still mostly generic drugstore models, uh, but at least they are wearing them over their faces, but it's still kind of hard to hear any speech through them. Uh, it's, the masks are distracting from the rest of the costume and the scenery, likely doesn't match, just not good mask use at all. Uh, five to six, uh, they're starting to see an even blend of quality as we go through. Uh, there's an obvious effort made uh, towards making the masks complete the character's looks, but it's still lacking the details and realism that we really need to see to excel beyond this average range. 
in a 7 to 8, most of the masks are leaning towards the higher end of quality, and uh, they're starting to look a lot more intimidating, especially up close. Uh, quality and fit allows the actor to interact with customers without sounding muffled, like kind of like this, you can't hear a thing that they're saying. And the choice of masks helps complete the character's overall appearance. 9 to 10, we got a lot of top quality masks here. The, all of the details are intricate, all the colors, vocals are lifelike. These are some pretty intimidating masks. Also, like the makeup, this score can also be omitted if we don't see any masks being used at all. And also with the other one, if we omit this question, it doesn't affect the score one way or the other. Now this first picture, this is, in my opinion, one of the worst masks you could probably pick for a haunted house. Uh, it might have its own kind of sense of creepiness just because of how plain and not scary it is. Uh, but it's really cheap looking. You can see the strap behind there. There's not any kind of blood or grunginess going on. It doesn't look like there's any like texture to it. The only detail is what was printed on there when it came off of the production line. And for this second picture, uh, we got a hold of Brian from Pumpkin Pulp. He allowed us to use it. Thank you, Brian. Uh, but these are a much more realistic looking mask. Uh, like you can see the eyes are cut out. Seemingly like uh, whoever cut the pig's head off had the intent of wearing it as a mask. Uh, there's lots of bruising and splattering blood. Who knows what other kind of substances are on there. There's some loose meat hanging down below where the head was cut off. Even more detail work into like even the molding of the mask. Looking at those ears and the nose and mouth, all that stuff. These, this is a pretty top quality mask. You can still see a strap up here like you could with the other one, but most of the time when we see these used on characters, that type of strap isn't as uh, distracting as uh, like that other little cheap plastic thing was. So very nice masks here. And for our last question, how appropriate were the costumes for the respective scenes and themes? Uh, basically, did the clown, uh, clowns don't belong in graveyards. <laughs> did they look like they belonged in the scenes that you found them in? Or uh, did it seem like they were just randomly scattered through the haunt after they got their costumes on? Like, uh, for example, we saw a Freddy one year and he was not in his boiler room. Um, he was... A couple of scenes down, I can't remember. Yeah, he, I think we ended up seeing him in a swamp scene. Maybe he was chasing a, a group before us, and just by the time we caught up to him, he was in the wrong scene. So, But that was kind of a red flag. You don't normally think about Freddy being in a swamp when you see him, so we had to make a note of that one. For our rubric for this one, uh, we're looking at the 1 to 2 range. Basically, the clowns are in the graveyards here. Uh, character placement seemed totally random, borderline intentional to make everyone seem as out of place as possible. Uh, it's not very common for us to see this. Uh, 3 to 4, the character's scene placement still feels kind of random, but they do have a few semblances of efforts made to match their scene and theme. Uh, still not a clear priority to them, though. Like, the butcher still wasn't in the kitchen, but at least they were in the house. Uh, it's still better than them crawling out of the grave with a cleaver. Uh, young and experienced actors that uh, might be in charge of their own costume designs uh, might see this if they don't have any forethought or direction into you know what kind of scene they're going to be in. Uh, that can that can really pull this score down. Uh, five to six, a clear effort was made to make each character look like they matched their scene and theme. Uh, we're going to start seeing a lot more focus. Um, needed to excel beyond average, but most are at least evidently trying. In the 7 to 8 range, it's going to be harder to see those out-of-place monsters here. Uh, costume design and placement is a clear priority, and visual storytelling is noticeable, but a few key details could still create more immersion. Uh, most are focused on blending in with either the scene or theme, but typically not both when they're in this air range. And for 9 to 10, each character looks completely at home in their th scene. 
Uh, theming and storytelling is incorporated flawlessly and beautifully into the actors' appearances. Outliers in this topic are extremely rare or non-existent. Now for some examples of here, we're going to look at Earl. Earl's got his club here. Um, he could probably go in several different scenes, really. Um, he's got some kind of worker's uniform on there. He's got his club. If we put Earl in the park, eh, he doesn't really look like he belongs in there. So let's see where else we can try to put him. Maybe a kid's room? Eh, still doesn't feel quite right. You know, maybe he's the angry dad that doesn't like visitors. Uh, I'm not real sure, but it's still not quite right. And lastly, thank you Wicked World for letting us use this in Rogue's Hollow. Fine shot. But we see his name's Earl, and he's in front of Earl's Pump and Go, his little gas station here. This is where Earl belongs. This is what we're looking for when we're trying to decide if the character uh, is at home or fits with their respective scene and theme. Good job, Earl. All right, that's it for the costuming deep dive. Thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Tyler with Team Zombillies and the Scare Factor dot com, and we will catch you at your next favorite hunt.